In this video, we'll be looking at how we can cr create and draw some slanted columns. Uh, so we've got this um, very basic design here. Um, it's got a slanted wall on it, uh, and there's an overhang, obviously, with the roof. And so what we're going to try and do is create some columns that come up to support this overhanging roof. Uh, so the first thing I'd like to do is actually draw some grid lines from where I'm actually going to place my columns. Um, we can do that a number of different ways. I'm actually going to use the uh, model line. Uh, so once I've got model line selected, um, I'm just going to find the center point of this curve and this arc. So just from there and just run it up that way. And then I might draw another one uh, coming across here just so I've got a set distance. Uh, when I click on this, I can actually change where it is um, I'm measuring to and from. Uh, so we just drag that to there and that one to there. Ooh, just come out of that. Leave that in a second. So into here now, I can just go a size I want it to be, so I'm going to come out two meters from there. So you can make any size you want. So you're actually drawing to a specific size rather than just um, uh, placing them anywhere without a measurement. Uh, so to do this, um, we need to go into structure. I like to use, we can use uh, architectural columns. Um, I like to go into structure and use structural columns. I find them much better. So I click into here and we can choose between vertical columns and slanted columns. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, the slanted columns. Um, we need to make sure that we've got 3D snapping is switched off, so we uncheck that. And my first click will be at level 0, and that's going to be set at a height of uh, 0. And then the second click will be at level 1, and that's going to be set at a height of 0 as well. Um, the other thing I want to do is choose what type of column I want. So in here, I've got my properties. All I've got here is this universal column, which isn't very nice. Um, so I'm going to go into load family. And then I'll come all the way down to structural columns. There they are. Click on there. And for this one, I'm just going to go for some concrete ones for now. And I'll go concrete round. Once I've done that, I can choose which size I want. I'm just going to stick at the 300. If I wanted a different size, I could just go into edit type, duplicate, and then create a new uh, diameter. But I'm quite happy with the 300 one for now. And my first click is going to be at level zero. So that's going to be here on this midpoint and it's going to come out to there. So once I click into 3D, we can now see we've got this slanted column in place, and it's actually input where I specifically want it to be put. Um, if I zoom in and we look at the, the joint, we can see that it doesn't quite fit up to the underside. So if I click on the column itself, in the left-hand side here, I've got the base cut, which is set at perpendicular, and the top cut, which is set at perpendicular. If I set them to horizontal, and click apply you can now see that they actually touch the uh, underside of the ceiling and the floor properly um, so that's my first one done uh, so what i'd like to do now is create uh, two more either side of it that splay outwards uh, so if i go into level zero i'm going to go into architecture and this time i'm going to draw a model line and i'm going to come out 45 degrees yours could be whatever they want it to be uh, so i've now got this line of which to follow Again, back into structure, into column. Just double check everything's correct. So uh, level zero, zero, level one, zero, and the 3D snapping is off. And I can then come from the midpoint and then come out to there. And again, when I go into 3D, I can now see I've got this column coming out. Again, click on the column and change from perpendicular to horizontal, perpendicular to horizontal and apply that. And we've now got our column coming out. I want to put one on the other side. The easiest way to do that is just to mirror it. Um, so the way, I, the way I would do that is just click on the column itself. And then we've got this uh, mirror via an axis. So I can click on that. And then just uh, I'm using this uh, drawn line here just to, to mirror it across to there. And then when I come into 3D, I've now got it. Uh, where I want to be. Uh, because I copied it from this one, I don't now long, no longer need to change the, the cut ends for those. And then we could keep going around with even more uh, and have even more um, columns coming off if we wanted to. Um, just while I'm here, the slanted wall, the easiest way to draw a slanted wall is to um, draw the wall itself. So if I go off the back here, if I draw a wall and I'm going to change that to a just a standard uh, brick wall, for instance, and I was to come across uh, like so. Um, you can do this with any wall, really. So at the moment, we can see that's just a standard um, brick wall. 
Let's change it so that it only goes up to level one because at the moment it's unconnected. And apply. So it's now sitting in the right place. Um, to change that uh, wall, um, all I need to do is where we come down in the properties box, we've got this cross section definition. So where it says vertical, just click into there. And then we want to change that to slanted. And um, I'm going to change this one to, I don't know, 10 degrees, for instance. So delete that element, that's fine. So what we've got there is it's, it's now coming in 10 degrees. So if we wanted to go the other way, just go minus 10, and it goes back that way. And then you can see uh, that's how you, you, you would create a wall. Very unlikely you'd create a brickwork wall that looks like that. So again, I can just click on there, go down, choose my curtain, wall front. If you get these element, delete elements, just need to just need to delete them. And then you can see you've now got this glazed wall sticking out like so. And that's how you create uh, slanted columns and slanted walls.